In this episode of our series on Swift data, we're going to look at query and getting some of your data into your Swift UI app. Our current Swift data model looks something like this. We have a meeting, and each meeting can be in a location, and a location can have one or more meetings. A meeting can also have one or more employees, and every employee can be at one or more meetings. Last time we created sample data to use in previews, so we created an array of employees, and so here's an array of employees, Ann, Bob, Claire, and David. And we created an array of locations. For example, one was in the headquarters building in the auditorium, and the other was in the annex executive briefing room. And finally, we created an array of meetings, and each meeting had a reason and a date. We had to group these together, so we assigned locations for meetings. So for example, meeting zero is in location zero, meeting one is in location one. We also assigned attendees for the meetings. So meeting zero had employees zero, one, and three, and meeting one had employee two and three. And then we had to add this to our in-memory container. So we did this first by getting our context from the container, adding all the employees to the context, inserting all the locations in the context, and inserting all the meetings in the context. And then we called our methods that connected the locations to the meetings and the employees to the meetings. And our final step was to save the context. And we did all that in a property called preview container so that we could call preview container from any one of our SwiftUI views. So let's go ahead and use it. Here we are in content view and suppose we want to display some of our sample data in content view in the preview. We have to import Swift data and then we can add the container and the context using this model container modifier and passing in the preview container that we just created. Again, this modifier places the preview container and its view context, that is the context that works on the main thread, into the environment. And now we can use the at query macro to fetch data. This is the R in CRUD we're reading. So we have our content view, and as you know, I prefer to separate this. So instead of having struct content view conforming to view, I move the conformance to an extension so my body is separate from my memory footprint. And now in content view, we add our query var meetings is an array of meetings. And there's a lot here. At query is, as I said, a Swift macro. At this time, you can't expand the macro and see what it adds. It's part of Swift UI, which is not public. Meetings is a var because things may change and we may have to fetch more data or delete some of the data. Meetings will change over time. If you've worked with core data, you notice something nice here, and that is that the macro allows us to just specify we're returning an array of meeting. And so the fetch is fetching items of type meeting. That can be inferred. And each time I execute my query, I'm saving the results in an array that I call meetings, which is of type an array of meeting. And now let's display the results. This isn't really Swift data. Now I'm just in the world of Swift UI. So suppose I want to show something like this. The Swift UI itself is not very interesting. It's, it's work that you've done for years. I have a navigation stack and it will contain a list of meetings, those meetings returned by the query. And for each meeting, I'll display it somehow. I'll also have a navigation title, meetings. And so my results will again look something like this. For completeness, I'll show you the inside. I start with a V stack that contains the text meeting reason and I display that in bold so you see my two meeting titles. Underneath that, I'll display the locations if they exist. To the right, I'll show you the meeting date and time. And underneath, I'll show all the attendees. Okay, back to our query. We wrote our query like this, but actually we tend to write it on two lines. The annotation, the macro is still modifying meetings, but we tend to put it on the line before because it can also take some arguments. For example, we can sort the returned results based on the reason. And now you'll see that we see them alphabetically by reason, new hardware comes before Swift data. Instead, we could sort on the meeting time. And so here you see April 4th comes before April 12th. This is a nice way to put it, but you could also have written this in the longer form. You could have written this with a sort descriptor and added more than one sort descriptor in there. So it sorts on the first and then sorts that result on the second. In this case, this is exactly the same as what I had before. If I change from forward to reverse, the order changes, and now the earlier one appears below the later one. Query also supports a filter, so we can filter our data, and we do that using a predicate. So here I'm doing a predicate on meeting. Since I'm returning meetings, I'm going to do a search based on those meetings. And here I'll ask for all meetings where the location is the building headquarters. And so the only one that returns this time is the meeting that is in the headquarters. 
And so that's just a quick discussion of what we can do with query. We worked with preview data. We use query to retrieve all the records of a given type, in our case, all the meetings. And then we found that we can sort a query and we can filter a query. And actually we can do both at the same time. Next time we'll add, delete, and modify instances in Swift data.